most fascinating thing about wine is is how much is contained in a, in a certain bottle. So you have a whole year worth of weather that's reflected in this bottle of wine. So it's it is you know a, a document. It's like a record or a time capsule of that particular year. And then you have um, millions years of years of of geology and and the shaping of of geography that is reflected in that same bottle. So uh, and then you have. You know, if it's in Oregon, maybe it's 40 years. If it's in Burgundy, it's 2,000 years of human history reflected in that bottle. And then at the very top level, you have the personality uh, and the beliefs and the convictions of the person who made it in there. So you have all these different levels in, you know, that just kind of happen to be encapsulated in this, in this product. And, it, and other winemakers have mentioned this to me too. It's, it's like one of the few products in the world, it's an it's an agricultural product and it's an industrial product. So it's manufactured, it's grown, mm -hmm. and, um, and it's sold um, usually in many cases by the same person who you go into a tasting room and, and, and a lot of times you'll, or you make an appointment with a winemaker uh, or owner of a small winery and, and that's the person who's been involved at every stage of it too. So how many products in the world, you know, most farmers, they grow some things, maybe you can go to the farmer's market and, and experience that a little bit. But you know, this is a product that encapsulates you know so many, all the aspects of industry. So agriculture, sourcing the you know the raw materials and manufacturing and selling, all in in a lot of cases one person. And even like Burgundy, the old, you know one of the oldest wine regions, and you know these legendary people, you make an appointment with the person with the owner and and. You can do that and probably couldn't afford a lot of their wines, but you can still meet the person who makes the wine and whose family has done it for 14 generations. And uh, that's pretty cool. Well, you know, there are so many different levels to wine. Um, first of all is just the, um, the delicious, deliciousness and the pleasure of wine. It makes, uh, it makes a meal better, it makes it more convivial, it, uh, it encourages friendship, uh, encourages conversation, and you know, that's, that's just a beginning. Because for me, um, although what's in the glass is a pleasure and is fascinating, it's in, in some ways the least interesting part of wine. Um, the, the stories that go with wine, uh, the people who make it, uh, the place where it comes from, the uh, politics and, and economics of the wine business, the uh, aesthetic uh, debates that go on all the time, uh, these are all fascinating, but I think most exciting to me is to think of wine as an expression of culture, particularly in the old world where wine is a product of a community and it has been for, for centuries. And in the same way that, that communities created recipes for their food or songs or dances, they created wine as a, as a form of expression. And to see how that um, continues today um, is, is fascinating to me. And you would think that in, in our modern, connected, internet world, uh, there wouldn't be so much else to discover. But I, I kind of feel like all I do is explore, or much of what I do is explore and, and discover um, wines that, that nobody ever heard of 20 years ago are available all around the world today. I mean, it's really the greatest time in, in history to, to be a wine lover. And if you're, to if you're open to everything that's available, it's just a, a never-ending uh, sense of discovery. And that's not even, you know, 
the new vintage that comes through every year, uh, the different interaction between, between uh, the human touch and the place and the, and the climate. Uh, there's just so much uh, going on that it's, a, it, it's interesting and it's always a challenge to, to write about.